Hi, this is Phil Chandler, and in today's video I want to take you through the process of checking a, an established colony in a top bar hive that's overwintered, in this case overwintered several winters, uh, without any disturbance or management. So um, what we're going to be looking for is how the bees have organised themselves in this hive and whether we need to actually do anything to it at this stage. I'm using um, a camera with an internal microphone this time just to uh, see what difference it makes so I'm hoping that the audio is going to be acceptable. You should have a lot of, uh, lot of bird song in the background which won't be unpleasant I think. So as I said I'm going to wear a veil for this because uh, these bees are not bad but they're, they can be a little bit stingy. I'm not going to wear gloves unless I have to. Um, I've got my spray handy just to, to quell them if they decide to get a little bit excited. And I've of course got my hive tool at the ready. Um, I've got gloves here in case I need them, I'm hoping not to. And I've got also a, a queen catcher here. Um, I always keep one of those handy because if I find the queen and um, I need to keep her safe while I'm doing something in the hive. This is a good way of doing it. You just put this around the queen and um, some of her uh, attendants and you put it in a dark place in the hive and that just keeps her safe from any potential damage that I might cause accidentally. This particular hive has central entrances which is not the, the arrangement I tend to favour these days but nevertheless it, it works perfectly well. So it's got three holes open, there's actually a fourth entrance which is closed by a cork at the moment. The floor is a mesh floor as I remember and it's got a board underneath the mesh floor with a gap to allow for ventilation uh, but not too much. So um, it's proven itself over the years because this hive has come through at least three winters in this position and uh, it, with this arrangement so we can assume that it works as far as they're concerned. I don't know what they've done to the floor, they might have propolised it, they might have done all sorts of things to it but we'll find out in due course. So I'm going to start at this end which is the, well we don't know what it is yet, <laughs> it could be, the brood could be at this end, the brood could be at the middle, we know there's honey at the other end because I opened this yesterday briefly just to have a quick look at the end bar, but this is the, literally the first time I've been through this hive in at least three years, so um, we shall, it'll be interesting to see what, uh, what we find. The important thing of course is that when a hive has come through a winter in good shape and we do our first in inspection of it then it's useful to know um, ahead of time what to be prepared to see should we say what may be there and uh, that's what we're hoping to establish today okay so I'm going to start with my hive tool at this end and I'm just going to gently pull this follower board away and see what we can see. Right, the very first thing I see is a little cluster of bees up here which were linking feet as it were, linking arms with bees on the comb, on the first comb, which tells me, as does this little patch of um, wax here, tells me that they're thinking about building comb on this end follow-up, which they have actually done in the past. Um, so I want to discourage that if, if possible because that's not ideal from our point of view. Um, okay, looking at these bees you can see they're dark bees, they're, they're pretty much native blacks I think. Um, they won't be pure of course because they've been uh, left to their own devices for some time. But they're certainly dark bees mostly, there's some with some stripes on here. So let's call them local mongrels. Um, <laughs> you can also see right here where a snail has been welded to the um, to the follower board here. I'm just going to take that snail shell off. It's been glued down with propolis in an effort to prevent it doing any harm inside the hive. There's the propolis that was holding it in place. There's a little bit of comb here which I can just drop into the bottom of the hive. It's not going to come to any harm. There is a hole here uh, which has been plugged with a cork. 
This is, as you've probably uh, figured out from my previous videos, this is for feeding purposes. This cork, yeah, it does come out still. And uh, that is just a temporary closure for this hole. And if we needed to add a feeder into the end of this hive, that's how we would do it. That's how we would give the bees access to the feeder. Right, so that's the follower. I'm actually going to set this follower aside because there isn't very much room here. I'm just going to put it up the other end of the hive for now to keep it out of the way. And I'm going to look at the first bar. Now, in fact, the first bar isn't attached to anything. Reason for that is I put it in, I think it was yesterday actually, I actually added this bar. So we're going to just ignore this because they haven't done anything on it yet. I only put it there to create some space um, before the first comb because this first comb is off center. Now the reason for that is probably to do with the fact that there are the, the bars in this hive are, my, are, are, are an old pattern. They're, they're probably 36 millimeter rather than 38 millimeter, and that does actually make a difference believe it or not. So I'm just going to carefully remove this comb. It is actually all on one bar. Okay, there's the, there's the proof. It's all on one bar, so it is movable, which is great. So what can we see? I'm looking in this comb. I can see in this area here, the queen has been laying. There's a lot of young lava. Let me just check that. I have to be careful here because sometimes the light can play tricks. No, it's not actually. It's not young lover. It's just I'm looking at the base of the cells. Okay, mm -hmm. so the queen hasn't laid in here yet. Um, the bees look fine. The comb is completely empty. I'm just going to, while I'm at it, I'm just going to remove this propolis here because that is going to gum up the works if you leave it. Right, so I'm going to put this comb back in here, leaving a space. Now, when you're going through a top bar hive like this, it's a good idea, I think, to move one bar back at a time, create a space, just one space, and then move the next one. Now, you might notice that this next bar, I'm just checking for attachments, and yes, I can feel there are attachments. When you're checking for attachments, you can, you obviously do it visually, you can look down the side, but as soon as you start to move the bar even slightly, you'll feel a little bit of resistance, and that's a clue that it's attached. That side is hardly attached at all. You can see there's just that little piece of wax there, which we can remove. Okay, again, we're seeing empty comb on that side, honey on this side. This is sealed honey. And I can also see, uh, excuse me, bees. I can also see up here there is liquid nectar, with it, which they must have just stored. So this is going to be a honeycomb, and the queen's not going to have a chance to lay on it. I'm hearing a bit of a hum from the hive. It's not a, it's not an angry noise, um, and I don't think it's a. I, well, I certainly don't think it's a queen, uh, a queenless noise. Although they do make a noise when they when they feel like they're queenless, it may be just um, it may be just the bees noticing that I'm here, and maybe sort of sounding a an early warning. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Again, the next comb. Um, small attachments, I'm just carefully cutting them. Also, something you should do while you're cutting attachments is remove any um, what we call burr comb from the sides of the hive because they will get in the way if you leave them. Okay, so this this is actually a very narrow bar. I'm not quite sure even how this got in, into the equation, but what I'm going to do in a minute, I'll show you. If you do, if you if you attempted to use narrow bars, I mean, don't don't you know, let me stop you experimenting by all means. But 
I, I did go down to experimentally I went down to 32 millimeters at one point which turned out to be um, not very successful at all they, they made a lot of cross comb and I have a feeling this is one of those bars but in fact it looks to me even less than 32 millimeters so again I don't know what it's doing in there but there is a there is something we can do about it we can widen effectively widen that bar by adding um, a wooden shim to one side. Now that would that that will bring it up to I would say 36-ish millimeters there, um, which will do for now. It's better than it was. Just being careful not to squash bees. Right. So you'll notice what I've done here is I've drawn the second bar back to the first bar, and it's important when you're working to do that so that you don't leave lots of gaps. For several reasons. One is um, you will find it extremely inconvenient to have to come along and close up multiple gaps full of bees. Um, also, um, it, it releases the uh, the heat from the hive much more quickly if you if you create loads of gaps. So stick with one gap. Okay, it's easier to clean problems off actually before you move the bar. That's another thing perhaps to mention at this point um, because. The, the the bar is effectively glued in place by propolis on on, it, on the other side, which holds it nice and firmly, and you don't risk um, damaging bees. So okay, I've cleaned that edge up. I'm just going to carefully put my hive tool in there. I can feel immediately that there are attachments. So I'm just going to. In fact, what I'm going to do here is just. A quick spray. Not that the bees are being mean. They're not. They're actually being really good. But I just want to keep them all away from the, um, the surface where I'm cutting the attachment. You'll usually find, if there are attachments, that they're near the top of the comb. Not always, though. These have their own rules. They don't follow our our rules, and they don't need our books. Okay. Here's the next comb. What can we see? We can see honey. It's quite heavy, this one, actually. We can see quite a decent chunk of stored honey. We can see pollen and a um, little bit of incoming nectar. This side, there's a lot of incoming nectar at the bottom there and a lot of stored honey at the top. This is a, this is destined to be a stores comb. This is gonna be all honey. Um, this is also a narrow bar, but I haven't got any. I'm just gonna do that again because the tractor came past. This is also a narrow bar, but I haven't got any more shims at the moment. It's not actually quite as narrow as the other one, but um, it's still a bit on the narrow side. Again, spray, little little gentle spray of water. This, um, this spray bottle, by the way, now at the moment contains um, birch sap, water, and also a bit of propolis that I've wrapped around the stem of the... Uh, of the uh, suction uh, pipe, if you know what I mean, All right? Because some of that, some of the active ingredients in propolis are water soluble, so that will gradually dissolve into the water, and well, hopefully, it'll do something uh, to help the bees in their efforts to remain germ-free. Okay, the next comb, hive tool in. Cut the attachment, I can feel, yep, there's definitely attachment there. There's also one a little bit lower down. Don't think there's one on the other side. No, we're good. Right, here's the next comb. And again, similar story. This time, loads of pollen. I hope you can see that multicolour pollen. Loads of honey. Loads of honey this side. All good. This again is going to be stores. I'm just going to scrape the, the uh, propolis off the other side of the previous bar and I will find some shims later to put in these gaps. Well, they're not gaps, but, you know, space out the bars. Okay. Uh, bees are behaving themselves very nicely at the moment because, well, as I said at the beginning, the old bees are out foraging. So they're pretty much out of the way. Yes, some of them come back, but they're... They, they busy themselves unloading their pollen and nectar, so um, again, they don't cause a lot of trouble. OK, 
Okay, next turn. Uh, again, small attachment. Any ho uh, any comb that you find that's got a decent amount of honey on it, they're the ones that are likely to have attachments because they are the heaviest. And bees seem to have a way of sensing the weight of a comb. And they make little braces uh, onto the side if they think there's some danger of the uh, of the comb collapsing. So how they do that, I have no idea. Okay, next frame is, ah, oh, now we've got some brood, okay, here is sealed brood, this area here, and it, I think I've told, shown you this trick before, but I'll show you again, if you want to see what's going on underneath where the bees are, just very gently touch them with the back of your hand, and they'll move away, and there we go, perfect, sealed brood. Um, don't worry about these little odd m uh, missing cells here. Um, those are there by design, as is pretty much everything that bees do. Those are there for the heater bees to keep the temperature up amongst the brood. Jürgen Tauts uh, discovered that, I believe. So, um, there is sealed brood surrounded by a bit of pollen. There is There are drone cells here, as you can see, these are bigger drone cells. These are worker cells over here. Um, bees being quite gentle and easy to work and no problems at all and exactly the same sort of thing on the other side we've got seal brood here nice little patch of seal brood some drone brood above it this is all honey and we've got uh, looks like empty cells over here so all good so far Back. Again, closing the gap, and, and just because bees are curious, they like to come up see what's going on. Give them a little little dose of um, water mist, and that drives them back down again. And on with the next cone. So we've just okay. So we've just um, hit the brood now. We've just started to find brood. So now we. It's possible that we might find a queen. Or well, she may have scurried off and be hiding, that's not untypical. Um, here we've got sealed brood and we've got some open brood. I can see some larvae in there, which means the queen was laying those fresh larvae um, around about four days ago, five, five days ago maybe. I'm um, not seeing queen here. I mean, it, it's really embarrassing if um, if I don't see a queen and then, you know, somebody sees it on the video afterwards, because that's, that's, uh, <laughs> yeah, but I think, no, I'm not seeing a queen on there. She's probably busy laying on some empty comb, she can find any. Again, this side, lots of brood, no problems there. Don't worry too much about gaps in brood. Um, there is this phenomenon called, um, what do they call it? Um, pepper pot pattern, something like that, where you see lots of apparent gaps amongst um, brood and people start worrying. Don't worry about it unless it's really, really obviously um, not right. This is, what's happened here is that the queen's gone back and laid into cells that have been vacated by uh, emerging brood, I'm pretty sure, uh, in most cases. In any case, that I'm not going to let that worry me at all. Okay, that's going back in. Propolis removal. Little bit of spray. Replace the bar. It's a propolis. You can, I mean, you can collect propolis, obviously, we've talked about this, and um, I think it's a, a, a very useful thing to have some propolis for your own medicinal purposes, uh, but also you can, um, and I have been doing, just drop it back in the bottom of the hive because I think the bees may be able to reuse at least some of it. Okay, our next little um, puzzle is that we've got, <laughs> we've got um, an extra bit of storage here because what's happened is uh, I put this on here to cover um, 
fondant in the, for the winter. Um, in fact, probably prior to that, uh, I've certainly didn't, I certainly didn't give them any fondant last winter uh, because I knew they had plenty of honey. Um, but prior to that, at some point, they've built comb inside this box. Now, I'm really not sure how this is going to work. I'm just going to very gently lever this up and see what happens. I'm hoping I'm not going to get a flood of honey. Uh, yeah, I am going to get a flood of honey. Um, so anyway, <laughs> the, uh, the bees have put honey in that box. And I'm going to just put these pieces. Uh, yeah, the reason obviously that wasn't a, um, an ideal manoeuvre is because the comb um, is, is firmly attached to the tops of the top bars. So this is just extra stores here. And I'm going to gently, although there's bees already on it, I'm going to gently drop it into the bottom of the hive so the bees can help themselves and restore the honey wherever they decide they want it. They are being very forgiving, I have to say. Um, this is obviously a, a very in intensive um, process as far as they're concerned. I mean, I'm going right in here and, you know, disturbing their nest to clean the honey off this. I am disturbing their nest uh, more than somewhat and, you know, they, they, they could be easily be forgiven for getting quite stroppy and defensive, but they're actually behaving very nicely. Okay, so here we have... Before I do that, I'm just going to move the camera a bit closer because this hasn't got a zoom on it. I'm not going to be able to see what's going on. Okay, very good. Right, this comb, oops, sorry, this one, this comb has got wall to wall brood. It's, uh, there are some, I think, emerged and refilled cells there, which I'm perfectly happy with and I think I've just knocked the camera haven't I? Maybe not. Um, yeah so there's brood here I'm just keeping glancing over there to see if the Queen's around but I think she'll be further in. The other side is the same um, you can see the, the concentric rings this is caused by the Queen laying in the middle and then laying another ring around that and then laying uh, and then the bees emerging and in fact you can see right here there's a bee what's happening here oh shoot um we've got some play cups on there and i've just broken a cone all right so now i'm in trouble <laughs> The reason that happened, apart from just sheer clumsiness, was that I was um, trying to turn the comb at an angle um, to show it to the camera, which is something <laughs> you should really never do. And there are ways of handling comb in a top, from a top bar hive, which... Okay, I'm just going to spray some... I'll show you the proper way of doing it once I've calmed these guys down a little. They, they got a bit upset with me because they figured they knew that something was going wrong, I think, at that point. Okay, well, this is, this is a case in point of, you know, things, things go wrong, okay, when you're doing this. And um, although I've been doing this for, uh, with top bars for nearly 20 years, I can still make mistakes like that. So what I'm going to do is leave that comb just where it is. I'm not going to disturb it again until I'm ready to close up. I'm just going to take the next bar out carefully. This time I'm going to show you how it should be done, okay? First of all, I'm looking at this side of the comb, 
um, have my, sorry, my arm's in the way, you're not going to see it very clearly. If I want to look at the other side of the comb, I can rotate it like that, and that gives me a, you know, at a glance picture of what's going on. If I want to spend a little bit more time on it or get a, a better angle, what I should do is this. Did you see that? I'm rotating it in the vertical plane and never, never tilting it from side to side because that's what caused that break off. All right. So again, we've got plenty of brood there. It's a little bit pepper potty actually. On now we get into this um, this this part of the brood nest. But again, I'm not going to worry about that because the queen is laying strongly, and that's the important thing here. I'm not seeing any signs of um, either of the two dread diseases, EFB or AFB. I am seeing one or two wings, one, sorry, one or two bees, not on this one, but I have seen one or two bees with um, deformed wings. Now that indicates that they have got, um, there's one down at the bottom there, which I can't show you because it's, uh, I can't hold this in one hand easily. I'm just going to pop that back and clean it up. Um, again, I've been, this is where I've actually disobeyed my own rules. I'm going to put this honey over here out of the way. The rule I'm disobeying is to only have one gap. Okay, so I'm going to, what I'm going to do, this broken comb here, I'm, it's not completely broken off, so they will reattach it. I'm just going to make sure it's straight, which it reasonably is, I think. It's straight as in right angles to the side. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to close the gap by doing this. And I'm going to throw the beads down. As you can see, this works at least as well as smoke does. We're getting bees out of the way. It's a bit tricky doing this with all these bars because it's a bit gummed up with chocolate. Come on, girls, down you go. Sometimes you have to give them a little bit of extra persuasion, but usually they'll take the hint. Right, so closing that gap up, and now I'm going to close it up to the next bar as well. Although I haven't cleaned it yet, so let me just get that propolis off. Um, scraping the propolis like that can, you know, if there are bees on it, then they, they might get a little bit touchy. But... Alright, so I'm going to close up this gap, hopefully because there are bees in it. I'm going to spray them down like this. Heads down, girls, come on. It doesn't hurt if you have to give them multiple sprays of water. Water does not hurt. They can handle water very easily. Most of it drip, drips away harmlessly anyway. And it's not going to do them any harm. Right, so we've recreated the gap at this end of the hive. I am getting one or two stings on my hands, but not, not so much that it bothers me. Um, I'm just going to spray my hands with this water because that does actually deter them a little bit from stinging. There okay, you go, make your hands wet and they won't sting as much. So we've got several bars in here which are just honey. Then we get into the brood at about this point. We've got we've had four frames, four cones should I say with brood on and we're just gonna have a look at this one. Now this bar is the one I've put in. You can see it's got cutaways I hope you can see that. He's got cutaways to allow the bees to get up into the uh, tub here. Now, I was a little bit, I was a little bit premature in moving those bars together because what I've done is not left myself much room. I'm just going to put all of them back far enough so that I can get my hive tool down that gap to cut the comb and just double check if there's attachments on one side only, yes. Now I'm right above the entrance here 
and that means that the older bees are coming in and they're noticing that something's a bit kind of out of kilter, there's some human messing with their hives, so they could be a little bit more defensive here. Um, I didn't mention it on the on a previous comb, there were a couple of little queen cups developing, but I don't, they didn't look like they were going to come to anything. You know, just Again, plenty of brood here. I still haven't seen the queen. If you spot her, leave a comment and tell me what, uh, what the timing was when you saw her. Um, I'm usually reasonably good at seeing queens, but not always. Okay, here this side, um, we've got, uh, I'm being careful here because this is a comb that could break if, I, if I'm not careful. You can see again the concentric rings of brood. That all looks good. Right in the middle here there's um, a domed cell which I suspect is just a drone cell, just an odd drone. I don't think it's it's not a place where they would draw a, a queen cell. Lots of pollen on that side. Okay, so everything's good so far. And I'm going to go back to my system of just leaving one gap. Now these bees are getting a little bit frisky, a little bit friskier than they were. Um, but they're still not, you know, they're still not bad, but I can feel, you know, they're bouncing off, some of them are bouncing off my veil. Those will be older ones, and there's, there's one that's just stung me on the hand. Um, a bit more water, and I, I'm thinking that I can still get away without wearing gloves. Okay, we're good. Um, close up this gap. Next bar. Yep, there's attachments again at the top. Slide that hive tool down. There are other things you can use instead of a hive tool for free um, attachments. A, a bread knife is a favourite uh, because you can lay that flat against the side wall of the hive and um, just slide it down to cut the attachments. Okay, next code. So, again, loads of brood, honey at the top. This is very typical, it's the sort of thing you expect to see right now. They've got stores, they've got uh, incoming stores, which is the, uh, the the nectar you can see just by my little finger here. They've got pollen um, around the, the bottom of that ring and they've got brood and everything looks hunky-dory. Given the time of year, which is in, in, in our case early spring, They've come out of a, of a wet, cool, but not cold winter. By the way, when you spray, um, don't expect them to necessarily respond instantly. Usually what they'll do is stop what they're doing for a moment and then move away. There we go, all done. Uh, okay, let's take the next one, and I'm anticipating, yeah, they seem to have a habit of um, attaching at this side of the hive near the top of the comb, so that is probably because the hive isn't perfectly level, by the way. I think I mentioned the levelling. Nice solid pattern of brood. Uh, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum. Still haven't seen the queen, haven't seen any what they would call serious queen cells. There's what looks like a dr an odd drone cell or two in the middle of that patch. And this won't be a marked queen by the way, so um, that makes her a little bit more difficult to find of course. And these are Somewhat small bees, I would say. They're, they look a little bit on the small side to me, uh, and I don't know why that is. It could be my glasses, of course. Or they could be small. Um, or as they say, some people say, reverted to their natural size, which, yeah, I'm not sure about that. Really. 
Okay. Yeah, they're definitely um, showing signs of. I'm just going to spray it around my veil here just to create a bit of a, a, bit of a cloud. They're, they are definitely showing signs of um, more defensiveness, but we are nearly at the other end now. We're sort of two thirds of the way. Close that gap. And I think we're probably just about to run out of the brood. And into probably their winter stores. What's interesting to me here is that none of the honey I've seen so far has been ivy honey. And you can always tell ivy honey because it goes um, chalk white and it sets like, um, well, those of you who know what Black Bull Rock means, uh, it, it, it sets like that. It's really, it sets very hard and crunchy. Um, no uh, brood on this one at all. Uh, this, but there is honey. And it's not just ivy honey. The reason I'm surprised is because there's a lot of ivy around here. And it's, it's the last crop of the year, as it were, for the bees. It's the last thing they bring in. And so you almost always find um, a good amount of it here. This time I'm not. For whatever reason. It could be, for example, that at the time the ivy was in flower, uh, they, it was, well, a couple of things. They might have already felt that they had enough stores, of course, that's one thing. They just, maybe just weren't bothered by collecting ivy. Um, Another reason is that maybe they don't like ivy. <laughs> um, not all people do, maybe not all bees do. Uh, another reason possibly is that um, they did collect ivy and are subsequently eaten it. Um, what other reasons can I think that they're not being ivy in here? Um, well, it's possible. I, I haven't got to it, but there's a couple of bars here I haven't touched yet. Uh, interesting that they don't seem that interested in the uh, in the open honey here. Normally, when you put when you expose honey uh, in an apiary, usually the bees are all over it straight away. But they seem much more interested in the camera right now. spraying down there because I don't want to crush any bees while I'm cutting the attachment, obviously. There we go, lifting this bar out. So this is all honey. I can feel it even before I take it out. Um, solid honey and again, no ivy. Interesting. Lots of nectar coming in. This is going to be stores. So what can we say about this hive? Uh, yes, the same on the other side. One thing we can say with some confidence about this hive is that they have arranged themselves with uh, brood in the central section and stores each side. And that has probably been the case um, continuously for the last four years. Three to four years, anyway. Um, which means that uh, common how should we say, common saying amongst the um, top bar beekeepers that central entrance causes them to store honey both sides and often starve um, certainly doesn't apply in this particular hive. Um, the theory is that if the bees store honey both sides of them, um, it confuses their uh, their, their direction, if you like, in the winter. They don't know which way to go because they are constrained by temperature in the winter. They, um, they, they want to cluster in the winter. They want to cluster tight together to keep warm and they don't want to have to move any distance. So the theory is that if you allow a situation to develop where there's brood in the middle and honey both sides, they can start moving in one direction run out of stores and then starve because they can't cross the length of the hive to reach the other end. That's one of the criticisms um, often aimed at top bar hives, but I think, um, well, we can see from this hive that that hasn't in fact happened. They, they've survived quite happily um, doing things their own way. They figured it out, 
they know where their stores are. Now, this particular comb I'm about to take out, I'm actually not going to take it out. Reason being, it's um, although it's a nice straight comb, it's quite firmly attached to the next bar. Uh, by, by face to face as it were. The face of the, of the comb has somehow got welded to the next bar. Right? That's just something that these have done for their own reasons. So what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to insert another bar. Now, you can often do this by a sort of scissor action. You can see over here, if you can see past the bees that are hogging the lens, um, you can see over here that you can lower the bar pushing bees downwards and they are not hurt by that. This is the, the, the fat comb that's a bit attached to the next bar so I'm just going to move this bar along with it and then we are in fact right up to the end pretty much. We've got a... there we go. This is the last comb. The last comb with uh, anything in it, um, here, it's right up against the, the, the end follower board, which I've also got in my hand. Again, honey, um, as signs here, probably a mouse has been nibbling it. No, no doubt it's the mice who made this, um, you may have seen on my other video, uh, the mice who were nesting in the end, here we go, nesting in the end of the hive, uh, made a nice uh, wool, wool and moss. Um, insulated uh, winter nest and um, they were the ones no doubt who helped themselves to a little snack um, of honey of winter um, I see some of these bees are attention seeking um, types and they are uh, trying to attack the camera right now um, presumably just to get themselves on YouTube so we're going to have to call it a day there Um, yeah, some of the some of the older bees have obviously decided that it's time to put up a defence. And you can see on my water bottle here, they um, they really go for black things. The camera is quite dark; it's a dark grey. The uh, tripod is black, and this um, spray handle is black. So yeah, you need to watch out for that. They can get your hands. So what am I going to do about this this uh, this little bit here? So this snail. So bees coming up through that gap. Um, what we can quickly do here? I'm going to take out one of these lumps of honey so that I can eat it. In fact, I'm going to take two lumps out. And the rest of this the rest of this honey is attached to the top, and and it won't fall out hopefully. So I'm going to put it back over the gap. Put this um, reflectix over it. Now, there's a number of things I could do here. Should I choose to? Um, I'm just going to put the. Uh, I'm going to take that core cactus in the way. There's a number of things I could do here. Um, I would probably should do perhaps say um, one of those excuse me one of those is to um, add some more shims widen these uh, widen these bars out a bit because they are on the narrow side um, this, this end I'm, the reason I'm, I, I'm slowing down a bit is this uh, there's a bit of a gap here. I think I'm just going to leave that alone. Actually. They'll probably fill this with propolis and I can take the propolis out. You're probably seeing a lot of bees on the uh, camera lens. Um, as I said, they, 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 they really take a dislike to cameras sometimes. Either that or they just want to see themselves um, on film. Who knows? But... Um, it might look to you like these bees are excessively angry, but actually they're not. Uh, they're probably making quite a lot of noise because some of them are very close to the microphone of the camera, which is on the top of the camera, of the lens. So it probably sounds, you know, there's probably a dreadful din, uh, and you're thinking, oh my god, those bees are angry. But you can see, if I put my hands here, 
coming to the camera. They're really not that interested in me at all. They're not attacking me. So it's just the camera that's annoying them. Okay, so that's it for this hive. We've we've uh, we've been right through it. We can see there's uh, there's brood. I haven't seen the queen. Maybe you have, um, but I haven't seen it. I've seen her. Um, the bars are a bit on the narrow side. Some of them are a bit old and, and chewed. Uh, could do with replacing, but that's okay. We're not going to bother with that at the moment. Um, I could go through and shim all these bars out to make them, you know, standard 38 mm spacing. May or may not do that. Um, but really, these bees are looking after themselves very well. They've, they've got everything they need. They've got brood, they've got pollen, they've got um, stores, they've got nectar coming in, and they've got uh, reserves. So I'm not in the least bit worried about them, particularly as they've been here for, let's say, about four years. Um, never had any treatment at all, never had any varroicides, never had any osema treatment, nothing at all. These are what I call survivor bees and um, I don't see any good reason to mess with that. So they stay as they are. Time. Okay, well, <clears throat> I hope there was something there that was, that was useful to you and um, I should do more top bar videos and other videos as well, so uh, I hope uh, right at this time when you perhaps have um, more leisure time than you were anticipating, um, be sure the camera, um, that, uh, that you find something useful in them and I shall hope to see you in the next one. Obviously, I don't really mean that, do I, because I won't be seeing you, you'll be seeing me, I guess, but thanks for watching anyway.